Hi. Emotions are prompted often by outside circumstances, but they're generated from within. Nobody can make you feel a certain way. I say that because, for example, uh, somebody could be late to a meeting. You might react by feeling angry, or you might feel relieved because you didn't want to have the meeting to begin with. So they didn't do anything differently in those two circumstances, but the feeling that you have is different depending on what your needs are. Emotions uh, bring it, our attention to something that's either um, there for us, a need that's being met, so you might feel happy and in love, or, or something that's missing, a need that's not being met, like your need to feel safe, or your need to feel free, um, or your need for love. So the emotion can give you some important information but you might not want to dwell in a negative, uncomfortable emotion after it's served its purpose. And there are ways to let the um, negative emotions dissipate and to replace them with emotions that you generate because you generate these feelings from within. They can be prompted from without, but you're generating them from within. So I'm gonna tell you a very um, straightforward three-part technique to deal with uncomfortable emotions and replace them with emotions that you intend. The first part is to accept, to embrace the emotion. Uh, maybe I'm feeling sad today. It could be that I just don't know why. It could be completely chemical or it could be because I'm fearful or I'm anxious about something, but it's, it's a way to tell you what's going on that you might not be paying attention to it. So instead of pushing it away, and having it build up inside, embrace it. And you can even open your arms up and allow yourself to feel that emotion. That's the first part, to accept the emotion and to be in it. And the second part is after it's served its purpose, it's told you what you need to know is to allow it to dissipate by breathing through it. And there's a very straightforward technique to breathe through your emotions so that it doesn't have that hold on you. It doesn't have as much power over you. And then you can use techniques to generate the emotion that you want to have. Um, I mean, if, if something terrible is going on or might go on, might happen in the future, it certainly doesn't do you any good to live in this moment full of fear, or anxiety, or sadness. Um, once those emotions have taught you what they need to teach you, uh, you might as well have the emotions that you want to generate from within. So the first step was embracing it, accepting it, realizing why you're having those feelings, if there is a reason at all. The second part is to breathe through it. And here's a technique that I'll do with you uh, right now. You sit down comfortably and straight. I happen to be sitting cross-legged on the floor, but you can sit on a chair however you want to do. You, you don't even have to sit. If you're more comfortable doing this lying down, and in fact, I've done it standing outside in the world in a quick version, that helps as well. You can do that too. Um, in this technique, you need to try to feel where this negative emotion is manifesting physically. With me, it's almost always a tightening of the chest when I'm feeling fearful or sad, but sometimes it could be other parts of the body. Some people might feel a stiff neck, you might feel in your back, you might feel in your face or your stomach, the pit of your stomach, that's common. So what you should do is to sit down in a comfortable position and close your eyes and take a few good deep breaths. So let's do this, a short version of this together. You think about the thing, the feeling that you have. You don't need to concentrate on what's causing it. Let's just say a neighbor is making horrible noises late at night and it's driving you crazy. You've, the emotion is letting you know what's going on. You can deal with that situation, but these feelings are ruining your evening. So what you can do is try to feel where it is in your body that that manifests. Let's just say for me, it's, you know, it's usually a tight chest. I, cons I focus my attention on the physical sensation, not on the neighbor and not on what's going on. Definitely not on trying to solve the problem, 
just on the tightness in your body or the discomfort. And you take a few deep breaths. You're breathing in all the way from your abdomen all the way up to your chest. Pause and let it go. And continue to breathe deeply and focus your breath the attention of your breath on that part of your body that's feeling the discomfort. In Qigong and in Tai Chi, you might think of that as where there's a knot of Qi that's not flowing well. You want to loosen that up to allow it to flow. So it might be in one of your chakras, but you don't have to even think about chakras or energy centers. Just think about that feeling and breathe deeply and breathe through it. Until you feel a sense of relaxation until that tightness dissolves. This might take 30 seconds, five minutes or 10 minutes but it's a way to calm down and to release the power that that emotion is having over you. That's the second part of this three-part technique, embracing it, breathing through it until you feel relaxed until that stuck energy is gone, is dissipated. And the third part is to generate the emotion that you want to intend your emotion. And there are a lot of techniques you can do. Let's say the emotion is just simply happiness. Um, I some of my go-tos are watching a funny mo movie or you know video to make myself laugh. That's always healthy. Doing qigong because that uh, is very calming and helps to generate uh, almost euphoric feelings. And um, or dancing. It's another great one. I mean, spe you know, especially great if no one's around and you could just turn on some music and just freeform crazy dance. Um, if you don't, uh, you certainly don't have to dance in any way to impress anybody. You can just shake. But moving your body, getting those endorphins flowing, that can help you. That can be a technique, a tool to generate the kind of feeling that you want to have. And another basic and very uh, helpful technique can be to make a list of things you're grateful for and to think through them and feel grateful. And you might start with something very simple like having a roof over your head or being grateful for the plants in your house, if you have plants. You might be grateful for one person and you, and it's, you can write this down and say it, that's a good technique. I am grateful for my family member or my friend um, for doing this or because of this or for their loving support and going through that list it might even if you're pretty miserable um, in your how you're feeling you could surprise yourself you might easily be able to come up with 10 things that you're grateful for like the sunset clean air clean water maybe if you're not living in um, a place that doesn't have clean water <laughs> wherever you're living and whatever your circumstances are there's you there's something your clothes uh, maybe you have a very comfortable mattress. You can find something to be grateful for. Life itself, a functioning body. And this can help generate the kind of feelings that, that you enjoy. So once again, there are three parts to this. First, embrace the uncomfortable feeling. Allow, you can even actually physically embrace it by reaching out your arms instead of pushing it away. Feeling that feeling and realizing, if you can, why you're feeling it. Then sitting down or getting to a, a quiet place and feeling where it manifests in your body, usually as tightness, and breathing through that until that energy is flowing and that tightness is, has dissipated. And then using a tool to help you generate the feelings that you want to have that are... That are can, conducive to living the life that you want to have right now in this moment. There's no reason 
um, to spend your whole life sad, even if sad things happen. The sad, you can be sad, but you can also be happy and enjoy life. All right, thanks.